Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Nice and gentle. Good boy. Very good. Good boy. Yes. Good. Yes. Good boy. Very good. Yes. Yes, good man. Good boy, buddy. Very good. This dog do not want to go down.
Place. Yes. Good boy. Boy, sit. Good boy. Very good. Very good, man. Very good. Very good. And that is why you don't get lazy. You keep the goddamn tools on the dog. I just missed a wonderful opportunity to correct the main behavior for which he was brought to me. He just nailed the fuck out of me. He just bit me three times. Hard. Hard. He didn't maul me, but he nailed me. And had he had that remote collar on, I could have lit him, I could have lit his ass up right there. And I guarantee you that probably would have been the last time he ever bit me. At least when he's wearing the remote collar. And then I can safely build upon having shut that behavior down. And teach him to love these instead of to nail them. I was feeding him here and I brought this hand in with more food. And he nailed that hand. So this is a really extreme issue. Um, and he bit multiple times. The only good news is that he's got enough bite inhibition to where he didn't, he didn't like lacerate or shake, but he, he gave me a nice puncture there, 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 and there. You can't get worked up when those moments happen or else the dog is more prone um, to nail you again, you know, especially right in that moment. I'm not going to start telling a dog no and yelling at a dog or I don't want to yell at all, but I'm not going to tell a dog no in a moment like that. If I have like, I'm not going to put spatial pressure on the dog or make direct eye contact, give a firm no. If I don't have a tool to back that verbal marker up with, you know what I mean? Or else it becomes nothing to the dog. It's just a bluff. Tell me no, I'll bite you again. You know, tell me no and correct me. I'll think twice the next time I hear the word no. I'll think twice about biting you again, you know. And you saw me go in right away. You know, I took a brief pause, and then I put him back on his board. I rewarded him for going to the board. I clean up my hands. Very first thing I do is get that fucking remote collar on. So if this happens again, I have the means to correct it. Now, that doesn't mean I want to put the collar on him and try to induce him to bite me just to correct him. That's just not how it works. Or else then the dog's never gonna wanna work with me again. He needs to poop. Come here, buddy. You need to poop. Let's get you out there. You need to poop. Yes, you do. Good boy. Right after you take a bite is when you're most likely to take another one handling the dog like that. So, you know, I'm trying to be careful. Um, also, a 
Um, I mean, it goes without saying, I have to reinforce that that was all my fault that that happened. I know the dog has food aggression, right? And I know when I'm testing a dog and pushing a dog, I even made a video working with Cade where I said, just because you're offering more food into the bowl doesn't mean the dog's going to be tolerant to that. It might bite the hand that's trying to feed it, or it might bite that hand multiple times. So, my fault. I, I should have had a muzzle on him, or I shouldn't be pushing it that far that soon. I definitely should have had tools on him so I could correct him. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Yes. Um, and so, you know, yes. Good boy. We just want to be careful. I mean, I've given him a lot of treats and then pet his head while he's eating the treat, and he has not bit me or gotten aggressive. So I kind of thought I'd be able to be feeding him and bring in more, but he just nailed the hand that was coming in. Now, had I gotten all worked up, yelled at him, screamed at him, sent him to his crate, punished him out of anger, anything like that, the next time we try to do a session, he's either gonna be shut down, like I don't wanna do any of this, I remember what happened the last time, or he's gonna be on edge, like let's do this. You know what I mean? Ultimately, we have to get dogs like this to relax. We gotta put their mind at ease. And, and part of that requires us maintaining a certain level of self-control in moments where, you know, something so bad like this happens that, you know, the, the natural reaction would be to get really worked up. I mean, he, he really nailed me right there multiple times. So, but we don't get worked up. That's just going to get the dog more worked up. And here, here's the ultimate lesson. It's going to make you look weak and fearful in the dog's mind if you, like, totally lose your cool. Now, I'm pissed at myself that I even backed up like that because I reinforced that biting works. What I needed to do, I mean, I didn't, you know, I, that's why I put him back on his board, stood my ground there and all that, because that backing up when you take a bite, it's so, I mean, it's almost impossible not to, especially when you get bit that hard. Um, but it's no good because it teaches the dog that biting works. And we don't, we don't want to be reinforcing that behavior, right? I'm glad I got that recorded. The last time I got nailed, it was on camera too. It's very helpful because usually when a trainer takes a bite from an aggressive dog, it's 100% their fault. You know, they, they saw it coming or they, they cut corners, they made mistakes. You know, they, they, in hindsight, watching the video, I'm sure I'm gonna see even more. Um, now, good, very good, very good boy. He looked like he was getting ready to drop a poop right by the door. Now, in a moment like this, even reaching down to grab the leash right by his neck could trigger another bite. Come. Good boy. And so I just want to be careful. I want to read his body language. He's not really good at giving warnings. He just goes for it, but it is what it is. Good boy. Place. Yes. Good boy. Very good. Very good. So I think I'm going to be done. Notice how I don't reach in right by his neck. I'm going down here to get the end of the leash and then we'll choke up. Um, I'm probably done using treats to train this dog with for now. I'm probably just going to get him hooked on a tug and start using that tug. Um, another thing, I don't know if I got this on camera or not last night, but the second I started playing tug with him and he got really worked up, he immediately started like play attacking me, but it was enough to where it made me uneasy. Like he started biting my legs, jumping up and snapping at me. And because he had already bit me hard, I'm like, eh, I, I can't have this going on. But it, nothing like this can, can happen. No play biting at all. So it is what it is. Pretty good boy. You want to take a break? Let's go.
Now, you also have to remember, dogs live in the moment. So, while in the aftermath of a bite, yeah, they're more likely to give you another, if you move on from that moment and you just start running drills and stuff like that, then not only can you get over the moment a little bit more easily, the dog will too. Wait, good. And now I just want to practice some obedience with this dog um, that does not involve treats or rewards. It's just, I want to set some boundaries, put some spatial pressure on him. He's tolerant of that, right? I'm gonna go to the doorway here. He has to wait for me to go through. No, wait. Good, Caesar. Very good. Take a break.